Hello and welcome back to our ongoing series, Let's Learn How to Use the Lens Meter. Today is going to be kit number five, and that is a pair of mounted progressive lenses. You know what I am about to say, and now for a brief whiteboard lesson. Well, today I'm gonna to surprise you and say it's not going to be all that brief, but we are going to have a whiteboard lesson before we jump back into actually working with the lens meter. We've done enough stuff now that it's time to kind of get back into a lesson and talk about some things because we're gonna start working with progressive lenses. I've touched on this a couple of times, cylinder form, the very last series of lenses we do, the loose ones when I talk about layout work for finishing, I'll talk about the plus minus cylinder form in a little bit more detail. It, it really just comes down to which way you turn the drum, and I don't want to oversimplify it or, or confuse anyone, but that really is it. If you're turning the drum this way, you're reading something in plus cylinder form. If you turn it this way, you're reading it in minus. And we'll, we'll cover that again in the end, but you know, 99.9% .9 of us are doing stuff in minus cylinder form now. That's why I show it to you in that way. This series is of course called Let's Learn to Use the Lens Meter. It is not called Let's Learn How to Do Verification. The steps for that are on the Optician Works website. Eventually we'll cover them here in video form, but we're not there yet. It's very difficult to talk about the lens meter without touching on verification, final inspection, so you are gonna get a little bit of it. A little bit about power. There are times when you want to always start with the stronger lens, the stronger lens in the 90th meridian. We'll talk about that down the line. For now, mid-range prescriptions, bread and butter stuff, Right lens, left lens, right lens, left lens. You're gonna be fine. VI is vertical in balance. There are times when you put the lens into the lens meter, you get it centered up, and then you switch to the left or the right sometimes. And the other one, the other target is up here. That's vertical in balance. We'll talk about that in the next lesson. About that axis, by now you've spent enough time working with the lens meter, particularly if you have the same model that we're working with, that when you look inside and you look at the reticle, you're gonna see that sweep of zero to 180 axis along the top. Your, your lens meter may not have it at all. Labs use a 360 degree grid system that's divided into quadrants to do prism layout work. That's what that axis is for. If you've wondered why it doesn't line up when you're in correct minus cylinder form and you've got everything set the right way and you're turning your power drum and the axis is 90 degrees away from where you think it should be, that's why, don't worry about that. People that are just starting out with the lens meter, just ignore the axis that's inside or within a part of the reticle. Almost everything we're gonna do with progressive lenses is going to be based on a chart. And charts come from the manufacturer specific to each progressive lens design, super important. It is not a one size fits all. Here is why. The industry standard for the markings on a progressive lens are the same, the distance between these two points. The distance from this horizontal line to the fitting cross to this, the distance circle is not consistent. That moves by a millimeter, two millimeters, three, four, sometimes five. If you use the wrong chart to mark up a progressive lens, your distance circle may not be in the correct place. You're gonna be measuring the wrong area on the lens. You're gonna get bad readings. You're gonna get prism imbalance. Not a good thing. You need to use the appropriate chart. But I have also placed a dimple to mark the spot that you're going to want the lens stop, the opening of the lens stop, to be right above, or right below, excuse me, the dimple right below it, so that you're looking in the proper place. Progressive lenses have what is called prism thinning, and different ones have different amounts. Because of that, it is not unusual for the target 
when you place the dimple or the spot above the fitting cross, the, the distance circle, right in the lens stop opening, just like it should be, for the target inside to be displaced. Not unusual at all. In fact, it's kind of normal. That is where your PCD or your prism compensation device comes into play. That's when you take that PCD and you twist it and turn it, and you can bring the target into the center of the reticle again so that you can read things just a little bit clearer, a little bit easier, a little bit simpler. Nice part about a progressive lens, it is the industry standard and the correct method to read the ad power directly from the lens itself. It's all about the chart. Once you take your lens, you mark up the lens using the appropriate chart. That's when you can check your power, you can check your fitting height, and your monocular patient PD. And we'll go over that in a moment. Because of the unique optics of progressives, what you see is not always what you get. So don't become frustrated or don't think that there's something wrong just because what you see on your job order form is not an absolute perfect match for what you see in the lens meter. Just don't be surprised if there's a little play in the power drum, a little play on axis. We already talked about the PCD. You have to be a little bit forgiving when you're doing inspection on progressive lenses. All right, let's dig around in our kits and find frame and lenses number five. Let's make sure that that is marked with the etched marking number five so we know we have the right frame and lenses in our hands. As I mentioned over on the whiteboard, I have placed a dimple on the front of this lens as a reference point for you. Obviously, things that you get back from the lab or you're trying to set up for finishing work are not going to have a engraved dimple on the front of the lens. They will either have the painted temporary markings as a reference point, or you're going to have to use the lens appropriate layout chart, remark it yourself, and then head to your lens meter. Instructions on how to use these charts and doing marking up are on the Optician Works website. Right lens, right lens, right lens. And there's a close up of where I want that dimple to be. That would place the distance area, the distance circle, the distance area of this particular prescription in the proper place for reading. I am told that I have a minus three, so I can rotate my power drum to minus three. I'm told I have an axis of 78. I can rotate that around to 78. I can turn my lens meter on and I can look inside a little tiny tweak on power, a little tiny tweak on axis. And as I mentioned, it is not unusual for the target to be displaced in a progressive lens when it is placed properly in the lens meter. That's when we take our PCD and this looks like it's about one up. So I can rotate my PCD prism compensation device to bring it from up here into the center. This is not an extreme case. Sometimes these will be five, six. Sometimes you won't even see the sphere or the cylinder lines in there. They may be way out here someplace. So you need to use your PCD to bring it into the center. But I just gave you a little bit so you get a feel for it. And sure enough, I've got beautiful sharp sphere lines at minus, eh, a little over minus three and at about 76. Again, a little tweak tweak is not unusual on a progressive lens. It tells me I have minus 175 sills. So let's see where I get closed cylinder lines. I get it at about 475, almost five. Again, not unusual for a progressive. It's about right for the distance traveled from a three to a 475. There's no reason to mark anything up. Your dimple will act as your mark or your reference point for your monocular PD and your fitting height both. So we're looking good in the right lens. Without moving my spectacle table, I'm going to move from my right to my left. And this time I'm told I have a minus 325. And it says I have an axis of 115. Set there and set there. Looking inside, didn't move my PCD at all. I'm still just about in the right spot. And it tells me I have a quarter sill. <laughs> Let's talk about a quarter sill for a moment. There are times when a quarter sill is barely discernible. 
don't be surprised if, if a quarter sill looks almost like a sphere, it's not unusual. So don't freak out. Uh, it's just gonna be this tiny, tiny little turn of the power drum, hopefully a quarter turn, but it's not always, and I've got good closed cylinder lines. Next, our job order form tells us that we have an add of a plus 150. As I mentioned on the whiteboard, we're gonna read the add power directly off of the lens. What you're looking for are the numbers that represent the add. And these might be spelled out like 150, 1.50, 15. Every company does it a little bit different. And that information on how you read that'll be on your chart. But what you need to do is find those markings and just simply read the add power off the lens. That would leave us with checking our monocular PD and our height. Our height, we can simply take our PD stick and measure from the dimple to the bottom of the frame. And I have got a beautiful 18 there. And I have got a beautiful, perfect 18 there. Again, like the charting, we're not gonna get into the nitty gritty of it, but the chart is also used for checking your monocular PDs. That's what that center grid is for. You're gonna lay the frame on that center grid. You're gonna use the bridge to line up using this, the triangle so it's centered. And you're simply going to read where the dimple on the right, dimple on the left, covers the millimeter ruler, and that's going to match, if it's made correctly, your monocular PD. Next time, we're gonna get back into a single vision pair with some vertical imbalance, introduce that concept, and a little touch on prism as well, because they're kind of the same thing. So I will see you next week when we tackle kit number six. Uh.